Thanks everyone for joining us um, and uh, for having us at Red Hat Summit. My name is uh, Jose Miguel Parrella. I work at Microsoft, joined today by my uh, colleague Boris. Uh, my name is Boris Beresnikov. I work on a Microsoft Azure Compute team. Uh, we're part of uh, about uh, 15 uh, contingent of uh, Microsoft employees that uh, are attending Red Hat Summit. Uh, it's our first time here at the summit and um, our first time sponsoring the summit. And the first time that we are uh, engaging with the Red Hat community after uh, the exciting announcement back in November of our partnership with Red Hat. So today we wanted to share with you um, a little bit about our, you know, why are we here is the, the main question we get at our booth. But by the way, we really appreciate all the engagements. Uh, they've been fantastic so far. Uh, we want to share with you a little bit of our approach to open source in the cloud. And then um, share with you also what, where the partnership is uh, in terms of uh, customer momentum, the milestones that we have hit uh, since November, as well as a little bit of the roadmap and the things we we're working on uh, collectively between Red Hat and Microsoft. Um, we wanted to frame uh, those partnership milestones in the context of three very important things for our joint customers, open hybrid and DevOps. And, um, and then uh, you know, hopefully look at a, a little bit about what the experience looks like uh, for Azure and Red Hat uh, products in the, in the cloud. We'll have time for some Q&A. Um, so um, just feel free to, uh, to, to ask questions as, as things go. So we'll get started um, talking a little bit about our approach to open source in the cloud. Um, for those of you that have noticed in the uh, agenda or in the, uh, the backpack, um, you know, Red Hat asked us to provide some, some collateral to put in there. Um, you know, and we're thinking a lot about how do we talk with the community about the way we do open source in the cloud at Microsoft. Um, and it's, it's generally about these five things. Um, for uh, a while, Microsoft has been uh, working hard in enabling customers running uh, open source solutions in, in Microsoft platform. Um, if you go back to Hyper-V and Windows Server and all of those products that you know, allowed you to run PHP applications or run Linux VMs, uh, obviously all the way up to Azure where today uh, we support a number of, uh, of Linux and open source solutions. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about what that means. And I also have a release, uh, the release of open source code uh, uh, by Microsoft, uh, with the best example uh, being announced earlier uh, this week at DevNation of .NET Core now being generally available for Linux and uh, being distributed as part of Red Hat Enterprise Linux as well. It's not the only project, obviously. There are many others that, uh, that we are actively contributing. Uh, on GitHub, there are three main organizations. There's an Azure organization, there's an Office organization, and there's a Microsoft organization where you can see a lot of those repositories um, where we are uh, releasing those products. But it's also very important to talk about two, two other things that we uh, believe are critical uh, to, to this approach. One is the integration of open source technologies in the, the solutions that Microsoft offers to its customers. Uh, and this is obviously something that's, that's new to us. It's something, it's an area where we're learning and we look uh, forward to learning more from, from the community on, on, uh, on the way to do this. Um, you think of, for example, of HD Insight is Azure's uh, uh, big data solution in the cloud. It's really just Hadoop running on Linux. That is the definition of our, our service. Or if you think of Azure Container Service, uh, it's, a, it's an easy way to deploy right. a, a, a container uh, kind of cluster in the cloud. It's also built on open source solutions. It's literally just your choice of Docker Swarm or uh, um, of, yeah, the COS for uh, running on Linux for your, for your container solution. So there are other great examples. Uh, we literally have a service that is just called Azure Redis Cache, that is just Redis. Um, and, and we're learning a lot about you know, embracing those ecosystems and increase the agility with which we deliver those, those solutions to customers. And finally, there's a lot of uh, participation. Uh, we've been in, in a journey uh, for the last 10 years or so of uh, increasing the, 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 um, the, the pace at which we uh, collaborate and participate in the ecosystem. Uh, and today there are many projects where uh, we have active, uh, active developers uh, you know, in the Apache Software Foundation. There are many, uh, many, many projects. And then um, uh, projects such as Linux, Docker, Hadoop, and, and many others where we uh, actively contribute today. Now what we think is key here is uh, partners and the ecosystem. It is pretty clear that there's not going to be a single vendor that can do all of these things in all of the areas with all of the open source projects that customers are, are looking for. Uh, and that's why we, uh, we have uh, partnered with many uh, projects, you know, commercial partners, community partners, technology partners, to make sure we have a well-rounded portfolio uh, for our customers in the cloud. I just want you to walk you through a couple uh, ways to look at it, um, uh, you know, how, how these partnerships come together. If you think of the application platform, you think of um, every, every uh, role in the organization that is looking to engage in the process of adding value through, uh, through open source applications. 
you have developers, operations, data analysts, uh, business stakeholders, using different tools, using different technologies from multiple different vendors. Microsoft wants to make sure we add value to those investments. Whatever the tools you're using, whatever the solutions, the platforms, the stacks, and the languages, the, uh, your choice of fabric, uh, what we want to do in, in Azure is give you choice in terms of the architectural uh, approaches that you'll take to your application. You want to use VMs? We have solutions for that. Linux is a first class citizen in Azure. Nearly one in three VMs that customers have in Azure today uh, run Linux. Uh, you can do scale sets. That's you know, the next level of sophistication for um, uh, more stateless uh, type of images and applications. You can do containers. We offer container service. But you can also build on the platform, whether on Microsoft first party platform as a service or on third party platform as a service solutions, such as OpenShift. And we'll talk uh, more about that uh, later today. For customers that are interested in containers, another great example of how those partnerships come into place is um, on, on our container platform view. So again, you have those, those same roles used in different tools. Uh, and obviously, in the container space, there are, there are, there's a lot of uh, tools that are very specific. And you have choice here as well. You can attach Docker to an existing VM. You can use a, a PaaS solution that uses containers, such as OpenShift as well. You can start uh, easily with, a, with something like Azure Container Service, or you can go to the marketplace where there are many uh, partners that are offering solutions as well. Now, what's interesting here is the hybrid component of it. We think that open is really important, and hybrid is, is even more so. And when they're together, they're really powerful. So with containers now, the hybrid is redefined in a way. Uh, now you can have workload portability, cross-cloud orchestration, and tools integration, and we partner with all of those uh, projects there. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're running Windows Server and Azure Stack, and, you know, the, the versions uh, that we have in preview out there. It doesn't matter if you're running your own platform or you're running something like VCOS, you will have that hybrid open experience in Azure, uh, and again, through, uh, through this approach and, and the partnerships that we have uh, today. So we start with choice, and that's what defined uh, really the partnership that we had with Red Hat, uh, what we announced in November, with this enterprise-grade -like cloud partnership that enables Red Hat and its portfolio products like OpenShift, Gluster Storage, Cloudforms, and Javas running in, uh, in Azure. But the reason why we did that was to really add value to your investments. It doesn't matter if it's your own application portfolio. And here are just some examples. You're, you know, you're a Node shop, you're a Java shop, using Redis, MariaDB, Cloudera. We support all of those technologies. You're running those on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Your workload is, is uh, more than welcome in Azure. But also because there are customers that are looking at Microsoft's own portfolio to add value to those solutions based on Red Hat. For example, you want to use SQL Server on Linux, or you want to use .NET Core, or you want to use Operations Management Suite. Those are Microsoft products that support Red Hat or will support Red Hat when they come out. And, uh, and we're talking a lot about those, uh, those products this week, and we invite you to the closing keynote tomorrow by uh, Joseph Siraj, where we'll be talking more about, uh, about specifically our plans with, uh, with these products. So in, in, in this journey uh, with Red Hat, you know, we started from, uh, from base of customer choice and offering customers uh, uh, an open and flexible platform, building all the way up to you know, the, the applications that really add value to, uh, to our customers. The key part that uh, Boris is also going to talk about later today is the integrated support. So these are, this is how the products align to uh, infrastructure and application. That's what defines our, our joint open cloud and integrated support is a glue that, that holds it together. And uh, we have really an industry leading uh, approach to, uh, to integrated support right there that uh, customers really love. And we have a couple uh, uh, customer examples to share, uh, to share too. So for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, for those of you that are not aware of what we have in our partnership today, um, we have a subscription flexibility with Red Hat Cloud Access and Marketplace Images On Demand uh, since February. So customers can simply you know, bring your own subscription through uh, Cloud Access or deploy a new image from, uh, from Marketplace. Um, and um, we have a, a support for other solutions such as Gluster as well. Uh, the idea is to offer Microsoft Azure as a hyperscale cloud platform that can really bring to life that reliability and cost effectiveness uh, value proposition of, uh, of Gluster. And finally, with CloudForms, Red Hat is also offering um, a, a way to uh, uh, realize that hybrid cloud management uh, vision. Uh, and Microsoft Azure today is, um, is one of the best supported uh, providers in, uh, in cloud firms too. Here are the partnership milestones since November. Uh, back in November, we announced the partnership. Uh, it was a few weeks until we uh, finally activated cloud access and uh, the first uh, 
uh, support in, in, uh, for Azure and Cloud Forms came out. In February 2016, we announced the uh, on-demand um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux images in, uh, on Marketplace. We also activated other interesting features that you're going to see today, like the integrated support user experience in the Azure portal. Uh, and this week, we're announcing um, many interesting things in the SQL Server on Linux, .NET Core, uh, Cloud Forms, and OpenShift uh, areas. Um, and we're going to see a little bit about that uh, OpenShift template uh, moving forward. I want to make sure that, that you also know and we share with you what's really happening with open source in Azure. These are numbers from Azure today. These are things that are happening now in the Linux and open source world uh, for Microsoft. We have a GitHub repository where the community is contributing um, solution templates to make it really easy to deploy uh, open source solutions in, in Azure. There's over 350 of them with 200 contributors. And that adds on the number of items that we have in Marketplace that are provided by commercial entities. There's over 300 BM-based solutions there out of 3,800 uh, uh, universe of products in Marketplace. Nearly one in three Azure VMs, as I mentioned, uh, run Linux today. And 60% of the solutions in Marketplace are Linux-based. So we're really excited to see uh, all of this momentum, um, not just for uh, the partnership with Red Hat, but especially for Linux and open source uh, uh, in, in the cloud, and it's an indication that the market is uh, also really, uh, <laughs> really interested in this enterprise-grade enterprise cloud, cloud partnership. Here are some of the customers using Red Hat and Azure today. I want to stress uh, a couple interesting things here in terms of context. As you probably know, uh, according to Forrester research, uh, about 40% of the CIOs will consider open source a critical or important part of their strategy for the next year. That's the reason why uh, most of you are here today. And um, and we definitely certainly see that uh, among, amongst our customers, especially in areas like containers, where we're seeing the number of customers uh, uh, quadruplicating uh, since January. So there's a lot of uh, attention uh, in a number of key industries, such as manufacturing, retail, financial services, and, and others. And uh, I think the most exciting part of that is the global nature of this of these customers. This is not a specific part of the world where you know we're investing as as the two companies we're investing our efforts on, but we're really doing a global effort. And that's really reflected in customers uh, across different industries. Throwback Entertainment in Canada is a gaming company. Uh, University of Tokyo and Fujitsu in Japan in the higher education space. Uh, we have government, we have insurance. So uh, it's really exciting, but it's also really exciting to see the two models of, doing, of bringing this to the cloud. There is the bring your own custom BHD, you know, upload your image to Azure, uh, and you know, lift and shift your existing Red Hat investment. But there's also a lot of the marketplace deployment, on-demand deployment. So customers that need to do development and testing, or they need to do an ephemeral VM to run some batch processes. Uh, even customers that are not Red Hat customers today, but can be future Red Hat customers, are doing that in Azure uh, as well. So it's great to talk about the, uh, the partnership milestones and the things that we have done since November. Uh, but I think it's also uh, very interesting to talk about the roadmap. So Boris, can you walk us a little bit through that? Certainly. And uh, actually, I'm going to make a pause and ask the audience, how many of you have used or have looked at Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure? OK, so a good chunk of people are already aware of what it is. And maybe to recap what uh, Jose Miguel was uh, talking about. So what happened in November of the last year when we announced the partnership with uh, Red Hat and Microsoft is uh, Microsoft became uh, the Red Hat uh, Azure certified cloud and solution provider. So there's a full supported, uh, we are the fully supported uh, provider, um, cloud provider where you can run your Red Hat products. So that's pretty much what the announcement meant to people. And the other interesting uh, trivia that uh, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux was certified to run Hyper-V since uh, 2009. Yep. So people have run uh, RHEL, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux for a long time compared to when the announcement happened. It's just a matter of bringing this to Azure and making it fully supported. So that's one of the uh, important things. So obviously, as we started this, we started with the bring your own software, bring, bring your own license solution, which means you build the image, you bring it up into Azure, you upload a VHD into Azure storage account, and then you can provision a number of VMs from it. And then whatever you deploy on top of it is the uh, set of the supported, um, supported functionality that you can actually go and uh, file a support ticket to Red Hat and be fully supported in Azure. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, just in, in a short uh, moment. So things that we're working on today um, is, um, as the announcement came on Monday, so .NET Core um, uh, was uh, released to man manufacture GA general availability, and uh, in a relatively short time, we'll make it available in the OpenShift. So you will be able to deploy OpenShift application running on .NET. So that's uh, kind of uh, talking about what just was uh, 
called out in the keynote. So OpenShift is your layer which you can move between the platforms. And one of the um, significant changes on our uh, part, I guess, on part of Microsoft is that um, we are inviting people with whatever they come with, whatever tooling they come and whatever the solutions they run. And that might be one of the examples, actually, that we run OpenShift on, uh, on top of Azure and then you work with the OpenShift interfaces, not necessarily with the Azure interfaces. Uh, the other um, kind of area of work, we're trying to bring uh, Real Atomic to be fully supported in, um, in, the, uh, in Azure. So this was part of the original announcement. It's just a matter of the technical uh, uh, realization of that in Azure, uh, implementing things like cloud init and things like that. Um, we just, um, again on Monday, we put in, um, I have a special slide on that. We put a quick start template for the OpenShift deployment on Azure. This simplifies how fast you can roll um, the OpenShift solution in Azure. And we are looking and working into providing the same quick start template, similar quick start template for JBoss. Um, again, a uh, quick start template is the uh, set of functionality in Azure where you define what resources you want to get out of Azure, how to configure them, how to define dependencies. And uh, once that template completes, you have a solution up and running. So you don't have to do the procedural uh, scripted like deployments uh, to make that available. Um, the other thing we're doing uh, today, so to, later today we actually have a, a, a hands-on lab for the, uh, deploying uh, custom RHEL images in the Gluster cluster on, on Azure. So providing that guidance, we will publish that after, after this conference to be generally available again for people to just go and uh, implement that. I know there are already uh, guides on the Red Hat documentation page where you can go and take a look at how to build a Gluster cluster on uh, Microsoft Azure. Again, this helps uh, you leverage the functionality and knowledge you already have about Red Hat technologies and use it on Azure. Um, uh, on Monday, we also announced uh, availability of uh, in support of Red Hat Enterprise Linux running in our um, um, Azure China Cloud. So this is uh, similarly to the what's called Global Azure. It starts with the bring your own software, bring your own license. So you build the image, you upload it, and you will be able to use the URL on Azure China Cloud. And uh, for us, it's what's called the uh, sovereign cloud. So it's fully operated within China. And if they have any compliance uh, complications that the, all the data have to stay within China, that would be the uh, example of such, of such um, environment in our, in our land. And uh, finally, we are um, starting to engage and participate in a lot of uh, Red Hat community um, events and uh, contributing, like looking at the OpenShift, how we can better integrate that with Azure, how to better integrate OpenShift with uh, things like Azure Active Directory. And even though the support for Azure Active Directory and OpenShift is there, a lot of people don't realize how much value it can actually bring for um, especially mixed environments. So it's probably not a secret. So maybe many of you have a mixed environment, Windows, Linux, and finding the ways to actually consistently move users between one and another is probably a big, a uh, big plus in terms of simplifying your IT operations overall. So if we can. Yeah, I think we can double click and talk a little bit more about OpenShift. So, um, and we'll, we'll bring a couple of examples. So OpenShift is, uh, as I mentioned, is one of the announcements we uh, made on Monday is uh, we're making available the OpenShift Quick Start template. Um, this is, a, uh, again, the idea behind is you deploy the platform, it's a fully supported uh, product of Red Hat running on Microsoft Azure, and then you build on top of the uh, Microsoft Azure. There's no, um, like one thing that people always bring is like, hey, is there a vendor lock-in to, to Microsoft Azure? And this is an example of, well, you run on the OpenShift and it just OpenShift runs on the um, Microsoft Public Cloud and that's the way to, to look at it as well. So in terms of the, um, what are we doing with this is we're bringing, uh, not just deploying the um, OpenShift alone and just kind of leaving it there. So one of the part of the community participation is bringing a variety of solutions that could be run on OpenShift, um, bringing in and making sure that um, set of technologies, set of products and um, set of tools runs well on Azure. So obviously we, we sometimes finding some harsh edges when things not necessarily work the way we expect them to. There are different assumptions in terms of running things across uh, geographically distributed systems and things like that. But in general, as we start looking and start capturing more um, kind of customer workloads that actually want to move to, uh, to Azure, or move to, want to move to cloud in general. Uh, so that understanding of what people want to run, how they want to run it, and run it on top of OpenShift helps uh, define um, like what kind of work where we should focus our efforts in terms of implementing features of our own cloud and how we should work with Red Hat, partnering with Red Hat, uh, kind of suggesting and uh, contributing to um, OpenShift where we can. Uh, the other um, kind of example is uh, Red Hat uh, JBoss middleware on OpenShift. So we are um, seeing a number of things in here. So there's a, 
uh, again, this is in, in the roadmap, implementing a number of the either um, applications or uh, integration services or, or various things uh, that you can use and run with JBoss and making sure that it's successfully working on the, um, on the Azure public cloud. I don't know if you want to add anything to this. I think we get a lot of questions uh, yesterday on uh, you know things like Fuse. Is, is Fuse does Fuse run in Azure? Is supporting Azure? Uh, you know people don't see it in the roadmap, so so they have questions. And the answer is, if it runs on OpenShift, then it runs in Azure too. Um, and there's a few exceptions here uh, that I feel that the Red Hat team has mm -hmm. flagged as you know we're still working on a, a, a few parts of the JWS uh, family uh, that we need to bring to uh, to OpenShift. But generally speaking, um, uh, we're definitely offering this route as well for customers that are already invested in JWS. Right, so, um, but again, uh, the, idea, the idea here is that what we're trying to convey is that if you have your solution already running today and you're really looking into um, employing the uh, public cloud to do this, we're obviously inviting you to Microsoft Azure Cloud to try it out and absolutely share the feedback if things don't work the way you expect them to be. Uh, the other part of the announcements that happened on Monday is that, uh, as I mentioned, the OpenShift uh, will provide a .NET runtime distributed with OpenShift. So again, this will, this will simplify uh, building a solution, building things on .NET running on top of uh, OpenShift and RHEL. So that's uh, start with .NET Core 1.0, 1, 1 and then we, we will maintain the version parity um, as, as the thing's getting released. Again, the .NET Core is the open source thing. You can go actually, you can do this today uh, yourself. You can bring the uh, .NET yourself, but the key here is that actually convenience of deploying, convenience of having it available already with deployed OpenShift environment, that would be the, uh, the value add that we will try to provide in here as soon as we can. Um, in terms of other things, um, so maybe I'll uh, direct this to you um, for in terms of the community um, contribution. So this is not just about the enterprise and dedicated, and the part of it is bringing more solutions, more customer solution that runs kind of the things that are shown on the left-hand side. Yeah, the templates that you're gonna start seeing this week, and we have one out there that uh, Boris will present in a second, um, are, are obviously some of the, the name products of OpenShift, OpenShift Origin, OpenShift Enterprise, uh, but it's also uh, important for us to be, to be a participant, an active participant of the community. Um, so we're actually now members of OpenShift Commons, uh, and um, you know the, the uh, engineering uh, leaders at Microsoft that are looking at a broader container strategy including things like Azure Container Service, our partnerships, et cetera, are now integrated into the community as well. So uh, we certainly welcome that, that ongoing dialogue um, because I think you know, everyone agrees and the, the industry is currently in a, in a listening, active listening mode um, uh, when it comes to containers, and we want to definitely learn from, from the ecosystem as well. So and maybe uh, uh, one thing that we can uh, probably take a look at is uh, to do quick start template on the OpenShift. So yep. let me uh, show you how that looks like in the actual uh, in the Azure portal, uh, where you can take a look and you can literally go try it out today if you have Azure subscription. If you don't, then uh, you can stop by the booth and or you can do it on the trial on the trial subscription and see what you can do with Microsoft Azure. So uh, to do so, I'm just going to switch to the uh, to the browser. And uh, one thing that uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to start from pretty much from scratch. So uh, uh, if you go to the azure.com, um, which is the standard site for standard entry point for a lot of things Azure, and you go click on the resources, so you'll see a button here that's called templates. So templates is the mechanism that um, Azure has of deploying the complete applications in the so-called Azure resource manager mode. And then there's a number of templates. So those are the, the community provided and the Microsoft provided templates to build a variety of uh, of things, and you will actually be surprised how many things here they are open source based or just the community brought things uh, into. Maybe that's not a good example, so. Uh, but let's uh, take a look in here. So there are a couple of command lines in here, but you can go uh, to GitHub, and uh, I'm gonna go just click on top of the quick start templates. So this is github.com Azure quick start templates with dashes. And I'm gonna search for uh, OpenShift on this page. And what we will see in here is so one of the entries in here, one of the uh, directories is the OpenShift Origin RHEL. So this is a template that allows you to deploy uh, OpenShift um, Origin with the Azure Active Directory. Now I'm just realizing that uh, they haven't changed the title. They removed the Azure Active Directory because it requires a number of prerequisites, like a creating a service account to actually access your Azure Active Directory. So this, this template, as of right now, will deploy uh, will deploy a solution with the local users as of Azure AD. Well, Azure AD, you just have to uh, create secret in the Azure Active Directory and, and use the same template to actually deploy it. So a um, couple of things you can do here. So you can click, um, 
That's the networking. Uh, Probably let's network. See. Let me try that. So uh, what I was trying to demo is that this, what those two buttons do, um, so they're simply loading, uh, they're loading the page, uh, pulling the template, as you can see in here, uh, which is just a JSON file that des describes the resources and describes the, uh, the way you deploy it. It takes about a couple of hours uh, to deploy OpenShift. It's just running Ansible scripts on the VMs. So the uh, overall um, kind of automation DevOps story for Microsoft Azure. So you have base VM images, and this is a rel, uh, rel based uh, rel based template. So you use Red Hat and Fresh Linux as a base image, and then you have so called extensions. So extensions just the uh, pieces of code that you can uh, run at the pretty much any uh, point of the lifetime of the VM to add in additional code to the VM. So you can either run the script, and this, uh, the, the, the way the template is built is just run the extension that runs the OpenShift deployment script. And whatever time that deployment script takes, that's, uh, that's the time it will take for the solution to get deployed. Now, once that is deployed, you have a running cluster in Azure, and uh, that would be kind of the way to try it out. Again, you can try it on your um, Azure trial subscription, or if you have any subscription uh, available to you in Azure, you can already do, that, do so as well today. Um, let me continue this. You want to show the portal? I think you have the, you open a tab. Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. So um, what, what I have in here is. Uh, the last tab. Right, so let me refresh that. Hopefully the connectivity is okay. Right, so um, what I'll show you in the portal, I already have, uh, so I logged in as myself on this uh, portal and uh, I already have the cluster um, OpenShift cluster deployed on Azure. So this is just one master and a couple, uh, couple of data nodes. And uh, one thing that we have a slide for is the integrated support. We can show it now, we can show it later. Um, so one of the big deals uh, of the announcement, I think what makes us um, a little bit unique over other providers is we are the only company who actually have Red Hat engineers sitting on Microsoft property uh, uh, taking support cases for things that are related to Microsoft Azure. So that uh, obviously, um, like the joke goes, is it's a, a lot of elbow uh, kind of pushing and uh, a lot of bruised ribs, but uh, it actually surprisingly fast allows you to, um, to get to the right person and to solve the problems really quickly. So there's no pushing back, oh, this is the Azure problem, oh no, this is the Red Hat problem. Uh, because uh, people obviously realize like, hey, there, there might be platform issues, and yes, there might be the way Red Hat runs on the on the virtualized environment and distributed environment. So finding the details, kind of doing the fast communication between teams Microsoft run ahead, that's what makes it uh, actually very valuable to you as well. And one of the integration points we worked on with Red Hat teams is actually adding this button. So what I clicked on, this is the, um, if you haven't seen the Azure portal, so this is just the VM view. And uh, I'm looking at the uh, single VM in here. So let me close that. Hold on, I'm trying to work through the Zoom. Um, so again, what, what, what I was trying to point out in here, so because uh, Portal knows this is the Red Hat Enterprise Linux VM, it lights up an additional but button here called Red Hat Customer Portal. And what this does is it allows you to actually link your uh, uh, Red Hat uh, account with the Azure Portal account. Um, so once you logged into the Azure portal and you click on the button, take me to the Red Hat customer portal, what will happen is we'll use the uh, single sign-on flow and we actually land um, from what you can tell from top, and let me make it a little bigger. Hopefully you can see it on top. So I ended up on uh, Red Hat customer portal and within Red Hat custom portal, so by the fact of me actually having access to Red Hat Enterprise Linux paid image on, on Azure, I'm getting access to the Red Hat resources here and I'm able to um, look at the documentation that is normally protected by the subscription and I can also open the support case directly with Red Hat. So this is the, um, again, the value of this is you um, running rel pay-as-you-go image on, on Azure gives you ability to go directly to Red Hat uh, through the portal and actually file a support case against uh, any issue that might be related to that VM. And that uh, kind of integrated uh, support system that we have is the ticketing system um, that will file a ticket against uh, Microsoft uh, if you go through the Azure portal or against Red Hat if you go through this place. But the teams will work together to figure out which issue it is. Is it a platform issue or is it the software that's running on top of the platform? And we'll be able to quickly resolve that issue. Again, that's a benefit for you and hopefully that if you start using this, you will uh, realize and enjoy the benefit. Yeah. 
We have a video uh, from a uh, partner in Canada um, that I, uh, it's a short video and I, uh, we thought it was, it was a, a good thing to, to mm -hmm. show you today. I'm not sure if audio will work, uh, hopefully it will. So I'll just go ahead and uh, get that started. It's not working. Uh, do we have a plug for the audio? Yeah, let's just do that. There, let's do that. Thank you. Architect is a integrated strategy design and engineering firm. We help our clients solve complex problems. Uh, essentially, we're building solutions for them, including web and mobile, cloud, IoT, and a variety of cognitive technologies, including deep learning. Over the last 12 years, we've grown from a few folks to a, a team of about 125 developers, designers, and strategists. And we've built out practices around innovation, human-centered design, and world-class engineering. And so when we're looking at which companies we would be able to work with, we skinned down our existing partner list from 50, and we went down to just a handful. We had Red Hat, .CMS, Enterprise Jenkins, and CloudBees. And we then looked at Microsoft from a cloud computing standpoint, which was a bit of a shock to everybody. Um, but when we looked at Microsoft's vision and the future of where they were going with Azure, it really was a no-brainer. A lot of the times organizations are having difficulty with adopting open source technology, but when we partner with Microsoft, which is one of the trusted cloud providers in the industry, it really allows our companies, our clients, to be able to adopt open source on the cloud and be able to deploy applications faster to market. We want to be open with our clients, with our internal staff, and we want to be able to collaborate. Doing those two things really allow us to develop exceptional software. Uh, what we bring is a, is a great culture, really, really smart individuals that are uh, innovating and really passionate about the work we do. But I would say we hope to be a world leader in cognitive technologies and innovative solutions for our clients. So hopefully we'll be able to share more of those stories uh, with you as we continue to, um, uh, to partner with uh, Red Hat and, uh, and you in a number of, uh, of these scenarios. But it's really exciting to see the um, uh, customer and partner uh, excitement about this about this partnership. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, make sure that uh, maybe we talk about the, the three things that uh, mm -hmm. customers uh, normally ask when we, you know, trying to approach DevOps and open source DevOps in the cloud, and you know, what are the things that they want from a uh, uh, from a cloud provider standpoint. Um, so, thank you. So. Um, Let's go forward. So the, the one thing, and, and I, I, I think that uh, we'll talk a little bit about this in terms of uh, uh, the partners that we have, but the, one, the, the first thing that we hear is, is the right uh, solution going to be available for me to deploy easily in the cloud? Um, we have a, a three-pronged solution to that. You know, we have a marketplace, hundreds of images, 60% of them are Linux-based, many partners, enterprise open source partners offering their solutions there. It's very easy to deploy with things like templates, as, uh, as Boris showed. Bring your own disk, that's uh, an option as well. Uh, since November, you can bring your own Red Hat Enterprise Linux disk uh, as well. Doesn't matter if you're running in an existing hypervisor, you can convert that. Uh, doesn't matter if you're running in no hypervisor. Say you're using, for example, HashiCorp's Packer, and you want to describe your application in terms of a template, uh, and then you want to build that image uh, in, in your Azure account, you can do that today. Uh, there's full support in uh, the HashiCorp tools, tool set for things like Azure Resource Manager. Uh, and not just on Packer, but also Terraform. Uh, or you know, maybe you want to deploy an application, a readily available, readily containerized applications from things like Docker Hub. We have that integration in the portal as well. Just as uh, as Boris shown, you know, if if I go to the to the Azure portal, uh, you know, and I and I create a, a new resource, uh, I'll have a, a, an option to uh, also deploy a, a container. So if I search for things like uh, WordPress, for example, uh, one of the options that I'm going to have here is going to be a container. Uh, that I can easily deploy from, uh, uh, from Docker Hub. And I'm going to have VMs, I'm going to have my own images as well, or maybe just the application that I, uh, that I want to deploy um, uh, directly, or maybe something provided by a partner. So uh, it's definitely easy to deploy, to deploy those images. Uh, also keep your own images. If you want to uh, capture an image, make some changes, say you want to uh, pre-cache the packages that you're going to download with JUM or DNF in your, in your cache so you can make a, you know, easier, easier uh, easy scale out, uh, you can do those things as well. The second thing is, uh, you know, uh, to get to something useful with those images. And uh, in the cloud, what customers mostly ask for is ephemeral VMs, built by the minute, easy to deploy, using the tools that I have today. Azure offers a, a, set, a set of tools. They're open source tools, tools that run in multiple operating systems. Uh, the portal, as you see, you can use from your, from your Mac, from your Linux desktop. Uh, the command line tool is Node.js based. You can use it from a Windows, a Linux, or a Mac. 
then you have the API, you have Azure Resource Manager, the templating language, it's JSON. It's all on GitHub where you can use third party tools as well. Uh, you know, whether you call them cloud orchestrator, cloud orchestrator, multi cloud tool, uh, cloud broker, you know, there are many of these of this solutions that, uh, that support Azure as well. We definitely don't want to get in your way. You want to make sure that uh, uh, we support you know, your SSH private keys in Key Vault. Uh, we have the Azure CLI, it's, uh, it's fully scriptable. You can plug it into your, uh, into your uh, whatever your automation uh, strategy is. And the third thing is the integrated support. I think you talked uh, yeah, a little bit about this. Yeah, and I think the, the Redmond team collocation is really exciting too. Um, right. there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, Bruce Ribs, but there's also a lot of uh, great lunches and great uh, collaboration and learning happening as well with uh, our Red Hat partners sitting in, uh, in, in Redmond. Um, we want to make sure we have time for Q&A. We want to invite on stage uh, Doug Smith uh, from Microsoft as well. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to engage with you, so please feel free to, uh, to ask any questions and we'll make sure we repeat them for the recording. So um, the question was, uh, what's the roadmap for the Rail Atomic? Uh, we're working on that uh, closely, so there are a couple of things that it is dependent on. So it requires uh, to run uh, for pay as you go model, requires Red Hat of the infrastructure version three. So that is not yet released uh, by Red Hat, so we were working jointly to make sure those things are aligned. By the time uh, we have Rui three, and uh, then whatever time we need to make sure the cloud in it for Rail Atomic works well on Azure, then we'll, we'll have it available. So I don't have a specific timeline, but hopefully, uh, within within very reasonable time. Again, I don't want to give it a timeline as a as a statement. Go ahead. So um, maybe I'll. Uh, say things that are not necessarily uh, uh, good for uh, as a Microsoft. So actually it's whatever is more convenient for you. Um, the reality of it is uh, what we're seeing is that uh, sometimes uh, Microsoft by default with Azure does not sell support. So you just pay for the resources, you don't have support by itself. So it's, uh, it's the way if you have a rel instance running on Azure, you can go and file it against the Red Hat and it happens to be Azure issue, it gets transferred back to us. So you get, you get benefits of the two worlds. But uh, if it's easier, if you know, if you can't connect, if you just have some basic, basic infra issue, it will be faster if you file it against Azure. If you having trouble something with deployment of a particular product, like let's say OpenShift in some distributed configuration doesn't really work well, or you're using some complicated LVM uh, storage with the uh, combination of the Azure storage and wh whatever you configure inside of the VM, then Red Hat might be faster. Uh, faster. To, to reach the support of whatever the solution might be. I also think it's maybe less tangible but equally important is that uh, we have done a, a great effort over the last year or so in improving our documentation, but, but uh, we don't feel there's anything comparable to Red Hat's knowledge base in terms of, uh, you know, if you really are doing enterprise open source, it's probably a place you want to go find, uh, you know, right. at least learn. Yeah, and, that's, and again, this is uh, the benefit of uh, getting through that link. So it associates the account. You either uh, create an account using the existing that you associate with the um, uh, portal credentials, so that's the SoFlow. And then after that, you can just click and get into the Red Hat uh, customer portal where you can get the documents on like how to work with things that are related to Azure at the same time. Um, so the question is, Red Hat Mobile was one of the slides. Is this in the, on the roadmap in the future? I think that what we may have, uh, so the short answer is if it, uh, it's pretty far out. Uh, so we haven't, we haven't looked into that closely. We might have been using. Uh, it's, it's in the future. It's in yeah, future. It's, but uh, like literally what I can tell is uh, right now there's, a lot of, there's enough of core things that we need to make sure they work before we get into that space. So. Yeah, it was this. Okay, got it. So that's why it actually has an asterisk with, uh, with a name. So things that have, uh, those are not necessarily, those are the flagged things that not. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, <laughs> part of it, thank you. So, uh, and again, the message is, if it runs on OpenShift, it runs on Azure, full stop. Uh, so one, one example I have, I actually have an OpenShift cluster, which I can probably log in and show, and then, 
at that point, you don't know where you run. Like it could be on-prem, it could be on this laptop, or it could be in Azure. It looks the same, feels the same, same API, same command lines. I mean, sure, when you log in, you have to provide the full URLs and things like that, and you have to be more careful with the opening things up, uh, but that's, that's pretty much it. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, the promise of Azure Stack, the answer is yes. So the question is, would it be easy to deploy OpenShift? All right, so it would be easy to deploy um, OpenShift on the Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is a set of technologies that provide um, your private Azure cluster. So it runs on your hardware. So for those of you who don't know, um, so you, you pretty much can, uh, the, the typical scenario is that people own data centers, people have data sovereignty issues and they want to run Azure binary compatible stuff on them, so Azure Stack is the way to do this. Uh, so the Azure Resource Manager is fully supported on Azure Stack, so the answer is yes. Uh, the only things that might be interesting there, and this is the discussion ongoing right now because it's in preview, is making the right images available, like making sure Red Hat Enterprise Linux is available there, and um, again, to give you the interesting twist and complexity of this, when we distribute the pay-as-you-go image, we, we actually provide the billing infrastructure with Azure that's in place, but Azure Stack does not have billing infrastructure, so we have to provide an images that you can run off, but that runs into interesting conversations how to do this. So that, that would be an example. If you bring your own, no problem at all. There, there is a Channel 9. Uh, Channel 9 is a, a video platform uh, by Microsoft, and there's a video there where uh, you can actually run Azure commands targeting Azure and then targeting to Azure Stack. From a technical standpoint, it works. Uh, it's, it's exactly right, and uh, uh, we'll be talking more about this at the Worldwide Partner Conference in a few weeks as well. Um, so, yeah, there are some, some nuances as to how to implement the template, the way it's, it's uh, defined today. It's a really easy deployment, uh, and it relies on that building infrastructure that Boris mentioned. Yeah. Um, yep. Right. Yes, yes, so that's, that's exactly what you can, you can answer the question. So the question was, do we support Linux, bring your own Linux, bring your own license? Uh, the answer is yes, and go ahead. No, we... yeah, so that was what the, we announced in November. The first announcement was customers that brought Red Hat 6.7 and 7.1, if I remember correctly, right. they're the, or, or newer versions of RHEL, uh, would be supported in Azure, both by Microsoft and Red Hat. Um, so maybe to extend, kind of volunteer the question here. So people ask us, like, what, what do we support? Uh, so we started with six, with RHEL Family 6, 6.7, and RHEL 7, 7.1, and whatever goes forward with the normal uh, Red Hat support uh, story with two years per release and staying on the latest dot, dot release in a given family. Uh, so can you run 6.5? Can you run, the answer is yes. Uh, we will probably, the Azure or Red Hat will not support it, just, just by the virtue of uh, extended upgrade support for those things is already done. So kind of be aware of that fact. Uh, the other part of it is uh, maybe, again, extending to your question is, can you bring the arbitrary Linux? Uh, the, the short answer is yes, as long as you can make it run on Hyper-V. And there are tools, uh, Linux integration services and a Linux agent, the two components that you need to install on an image to make sure it's uh, workable in Azure that's uh, open source and available. You can, you can try it out. And people have brought a variety of things to Azure. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, what... Uh, what Miguel is looking for is uh, just, there's a set of articles to, uh, for the particular classes of the OSs, what the configuration changes are there. And one of the things I'm demoing in the lab later today in Hanzo Lab is actually using a kickstart file to prep the image out of the ISO, and it's based on Red Hat in this, in this particular case. Yeah. Any other questions? Comments, feedback, go ahead. Yeah, we, we don't share those, those details. You um, repeat the question. And, and yeah, the question is, uh, nearly one in three VMs run Linux, but do we have details on what exactly are they running? We don't share those numbers for, for a couple of reasons. One, um, customers can bring their own, so we literally don't know what they're running. Uh, that is uh, very popular in many geographies. They bring their own disk, and we just don't go inside the VM and figure out, you know, oh, this is a Red Hat, this is a Ubuntu, or this is a whatever. We just know it's a Linux or a Windows, and that's where the, the number comes from. 
So it would be speculation if we approximated with, right. with other sources. So maybe one other technical detail is, uh, so we know uh, because bootstrapping sequence is different for Linux and Windows, those are the only two choices. When you define an image, you say, is it a Windows image or is it a Linux image? And from that point on, it's, uh, we, we actually, we even, so we, we as a company, we can never look in your image, right? So we can only track some of the uh, pay-as-you-go images, but that's that subset of what people run. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you need to switch on. The handheld mic. Uh, so just, I mean, the other data point that we have is, is the reaction we get from our deals and our sales team, um, and kind of feedback in terms of you know the customer engagement, uh, the excitement they have around the product being able to run and their Red Hat uh, solutions on, on Azure, and the feedback is super super strong. So not as specific, you know, what you're doing, but the, 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 those data. Yeah, AD support in disk encryption in Linux. Uh, probably not a date. We can follow up offline on that. So um, we get actually, so the question was, do we have a date for AD support in Linux encryption? So a few things that are on the, in the pipeline for the uh, disk encryption. Uh, today, you can provision the VM. You can start with encrypted image. You can add the data disks that are encrypted, but you cannot convert running VM into the encrypted image. So those things will come first. And then we'll look into uh, additional details. So this is definitely in the pipeline. So encryption without uh, not the OS disk, right? Not the OS disk. So if you already provisioned the VM and you haven't encrypted it to begin with, then so you you, own, uh, you could start with encrypted to begin with. Yes, that's that's available to me. And uh, I guess one of the data point I'll, before I'll take a question. So a lot of people asking for compliance questions, security questions, other than feature questions. So like people want to make sure they can trust VMs running in, in Azure, like and asking questions about like what do we do to protect you from intrusions or data loss or things like that. Go ahead. Um, so. Is there, uh, the question is, is there a timeline for the Azure Container Service to be native provider for the Cloud Forms containers? Um, probably not, I guess, um, not in the nearest future, but uh, one thing that coming up with the Azure Container Service is uh, like things like, can we deploy um, OpenShift on top of the VM scale sets. Again, this is not an Azure Container Services um, discussion. So we, we can follow up offline on that. So no, no dates as of right now. I, I would say that uh, they might fit different use cases. So they probably coexist. Um, the, the underlying uh, architecture of Azure Container Service that uses scale sets, it's probably something that we have in, in roadmap for consideration for the OpenShift deployment. But uh, from a use case standpoint, they probably uh, you know, f fill different use cases. Uh, we have customers that are very early in their container journey. We have customers that are using containers as a, uh, uh, as a way to realize their application platform uh, vision, and that's where probably uh, uh, OpenShift plays a role. Uh, it's probably a question that's beyond our scope, but but uh, I know that the Mono project has a, a page where they explain what happens with .NET Core. Um, so I'd refer you to 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 that. I'll, I can look it up. But they, they they said you know now with .NET Core out there, what happens with Mono? And I, I believe the answer is they're going to integrate it. Uh, it's not the same thing. No. So it describes the strategy. Um, yeah. Any other questions, comments? So are you referring to OpenStack or OpenShift? Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah, so. Um, So 
So I guess uh, the question is, can, can, can I manage two, uh, if I have OpenShift running uh, on-prem and OpenShift running in Azure, can I manage as a single environment? Or, or can your cluster span Azure? Uh, so from uh, Azure point of view, it's as long as, the, as there are tools that allow you to join at the uh, API levels, then the answer is yes. But uh, I personally don't know what the, that join and distribution might look like. So again, it's just as long as the upper layers provide that integration, then the answer is yes. Yeah. All right. If there are no more questions. Feel free to stop by after the session or stop by at the Microsoft booth. And thank you for coming. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.